Welcome to Module 3. Module 3 covers Chapters 5 and 6. Chapter 5 is about circles. So let's begin with Lesson 1. Lesson 1 is about radius, diameter, and circumference. Okay, so every circle we must know has a center. Okay, and from the center to any point on the circle, that's called a radius. Okay. And we know that a circle also has a diameter. So the diameter is a line connecting any two points of the circle, but it has to pass through the center. So that means this is a diameter. Okay, so if we look at the radius and we compare it to the diameter, that means the diameter is equal to twice the radius. Okay, now I said earlier that it's about radius, diameter, and circumference. So which means we need the formula for circumference. So circumference is technically the perimeter of a circle, but you don't call it a perimeter, you call it its circumference. So which means it goes around the circle. Okay, so the length around the circle is the circumference. Now, there's two formulas for this. The most common is 2 pi r. Okay, 2 times pi times the radius. But since we know that 2 times the radius is the diameter, that means that's also equal to pi d. Okay, now, um, in the grade school, the kids are asked to give pi a value. Okay, so here in this book, pi will always be either 3.14 or pi will be 22 over 7. Okay, so 3.14 is not an exact value. It's an approximate of pi, which means when they ask you to use 3.14, most likely they want you to use the calculator. Okay, and if they ask you to use... 22 over 7, most likely they want you to compute mentally. Okay, so our problems will come from pages 142, 144, and 145. So let's begin with 142. Okay, so starting with page 142, it says, um, find the circumference of the circle with the given diameter. Okay, so that means this is the diameter. So I'll rewrite that and make it so that it's 12.5. Okay, so it wants us to find the circumference and it wants us to use pi equals 3.14. Okay, further it wants us to round correct to one decimal place. So, which means when we put in the calc Q, we will have to look at the second decimal place to determine if the first decimal place will stay or go up one unit. Okay, so which means if that's the diameter, the formula I will be using is the second one. Circumference is equal to pi d. Okay, so it's ideal for the kids to write down the given. It's also ideal for the kids to write down the formula. So this will be 3.14 times 12.5. Okay, and when we do that in our calculators, we will get 39.25. Okay, since it wants it to be correct to one decimal place, we underline the first decimal place we look at the number after, since that's 5, this goes up, which means this is approximately 39.3. So that would be 39.3 centimeters. Okay, so in 2B, it says, find the circumference of the circle. So again, it wants the circumference, but this time around, we are given the radius. Okay, so if we're given the radius then that means that, and they want us to use pi is equal to 22 over 7, then that means that this is supposed to be computed mentally. 
Okay, so which means if I look at my formula that I will use is the first one. Circumference is equal to 2 pi radius. Okay, so 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius, which is 14 over 1. Okay, so again, we know that all whole numbers can be written as fraction. So therefore, here we cancel. That becomes 2. And when we multiply all of those together, that should give us 88. And the unit of measurement will be centimeters. Okay. Um, in page 144, the problem says, and I wrote down the given. Okay, I'll read the problem. It says, a circular lid has a diameter of 7 centimeters. Question is, how many complete turns... Will my complete turns must it make to cover a distance of 110 centimeters? Okay, and they want us to use 22.7. Okay, so which means if we look at this, we know that one turn is equal to a circumference. And a circumference is technically pi d. Okay, so which means this will be 22 over 7. Times, so you'll see that there's times that I use parentheses, there's times that I use x. Okay, so again, whatever is most comfortable you use. Okay, they're the same. Okay, and the diameter here happens to be 7. Okay, so that means that will cancel. So one turn is 22 centimeters. Okay. The book approach here is different from my approach. The book will take the total distance covered divided by the one turn distance. But that's harder for the kids to visualize. So what will be ideal here will be the equivalent fraction approach. So which means one turn is equal to 22 centimeters. The question is how many turns if it's 110. Okay, so again, we have several ways of doing this. We can go this way, which means that's times 5, and this will be times 5. Okay. Or we can go this way, times 22, which means this way is also times 22. But the easier is the times 5 this way because you get the unknown right away with the operation. So, which means if you want to go a distance of 110 centimeters and your diameter is 7 centimeters, you need to make 5 complete terms. Continuing on to page 145, problem number 4 says, The length of a wire is bent into a semicircle with a diameter of 21 centimeters. So you have a wire, you bent it into a semicircle. Okay, then it says find the perimeter. Okay, but it wants including that. So it's misleading that it bent it into a semicircle. It's including this. Okay, so which means the problem says find the perimeter. Okay, and use 22 over 7 as pi. Okay, so. Since they want us to use 22 over 7 as pi, that means that they want us to solve computationally. Now, I mentioned earlier that going around is the circumference, which means if you're just taking a portion of the circle outside, that's called an arc length. Okay, so, but if we want the perimeter by words, that will be the arc length, arc length, plus the diameter. Okay, so it says in the problem that the diameter is 21 centimeters. So again, very helpful for the kids to write down the given, very helpful for the kids to write down the equation as well. So if we want the arc length, that means we're looking at half of a circle. Okay, so that means one half times pi times d because we're given the diameter we will use the pi d formula okay 
then it says to add the d. So, which means when we compute this, this is 1 half times 22 over 7 times the diameter, which is 21, which we will make over 1. So, it's easier to cancel. So, again, when we do fractions, we have to be mindful that anything in the numerator will cancel with anything on the denominator. Okay, so which means this is plus 21. So, if we cancel, cancel, that's 3. Cancel, cancel, that's 11. That makes it 33 plus 21, which makes the perimeter of this semicircle with the diameter equal to 54 centimeters. That concludes lesson 1 of chapter 5. See you in the next lesson.